Hey guys, Phil here, and this is a review for the Tamamari MP4 player. You'll get the MP4 player, a USB cord, a set of headphones, and a set of instructions. The instructions aren't well written, so you'll have to figure out most of the functions on your own. The quick start guide images don't match the actual unit either. The player is designed to look like the 4th generation iPod mini. The body is made of aluminum with a brushed finish. This unit features a removable micro SD card slot and comes with a 16GB card pre-installed. The click wheel has four buttons, with the fifth button in the center. Note that the wheel does not feature touch-sensitive scrolling. The headphone port is located on the bottom right, and the mini USB charging port on the left. The unit takes about three to four hours to fully charge. In the center is a tab for you to attach a wrist strap, and it also covers the pinhole microphone. The lock switch is on the top left. Switch it to the left to unlock it and turn it on. Switch it to the right to lock the buttons and turn the unit off. When the unit is unlocked, you can turn it on and off by pressing the center button. There's a screensaver that will shut off the screen if you don't press any buttons within 10 seconds, and a sleep timer that will turn the unit off after 30 seconds of inactivity. This player is capable of playing music, video files, recording audio, receiving radio broadcasts, viewing photos, and reading text files. The headphones that the unit come with are very cheap, like the free ones you'd get on an airplane. The sound on them is thin, boxy, and the bass is non-existent, so I'd recommend using a pair of your own. Plug the MP4 player into your computer via the USB cable or pop the card out and use a card reader to load music, videos, or text files on it. All the files are simply put in the main folder which is named with Chinese characters. When you turn the unit on, you can scroll to the left and right to go through the menu options. To select an option, click the menu button. In music mode, you can play MP3 or WAV files. For video playback, this player will only play AMV files, which doesn't seem to be a common video format, so I'm not sure how useful this is. So strangely enough, this MP4 player can't actually play MP4s. The record function will let you do voice recordings. However, the result tends to sound like you're trapped in a cardboard box. The recording is a mono input with an 8000Hz sample rate. I'll do the next portion of this video on the voice recorder so you can hear the difference. The radio function works okay. You can go into the menu and select Auto Search, which will find and save clear signals. To skip to the next save station, click the center button. I was able to listen to a bunch of local stations, but note that the signal tends to drop in and out as you move around. Viewing photos is sort of what you'd expect on a small screen with low resolution, and the text reader can only load plain text files, no PDFs, Word documents, or EPUBs. On the screen, you'll be able to read about 20 to 30 words at a time before needing to click to the next screen. It's not exactly practical. You can, however, add bookmarks to come back to where you left off. Overall, the MP3 and radio functions are the real features of this player. Everything else is kind of lackluster, and the screen size, limited file compatibility, and low resolution doesn't make this a good player for videos, photos, or text files. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.